Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over part two of RF9 systems of linear equations. We're going to start off with solving systems algebraically. In the previous lesson we talked about how to solve any uh, or systems of equations with two linear equations. We learned how to do that graphically so you want to click on the link up above to check out part one of this uh, of this outcome. So when you solve systems algebraically, there's two different methods, the first one being substitution and the second method being elimination. So each method has its own pros and cons. Um, so we'll see exactly what they look like. Um, I'll talk about what my, what my own preferred method is. Um, and again, it just really changes depending on the situation. We also talked about last class how there's going to be three different situations. Right? And here's a really quick review. We talked about you know a, tip, a typical system of, of linear equations. If you have two lines, there could be one solution. So one solution would mean you have your one intersection there. We could have a second and third situation. So we could have a second situation where we have two parallel lines. So the slopes are, are the same. Or we could have a third situation where the lines are coincidental. So they're right on top of each other. And remember our characteristics of each scenario. Here we have different slopes. That's the key um, characteristic. So different slopes. And we have, therefore, one solution. For the second one, we're going to have the same slope. different y-intercepts. So therefore, we're going to have no solutions. And for this third situation, we're going to have the same slope and the same y-intercept. And we're going to have an infinite number of solutions. Right, so there were the three um, three situations that we discussed last class. So let's go back to today um, today's lesson. So a couple things to note here: if a system has no solutions, the variables are going to disappear, and a false statement will appear. Now, obviously, that's going to make no sense right now um, until I give you an example, but just keep that in mind. If a system has an infinite number of solutions, the variables are going to disappear, and a true statement will appear. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll see a couple of these as we work through, um, through all of these examples. So I'll make sure to point those out as we go along. So our first method, if we're solving through substitution, all we really need to do is isolate one of the variables, and then we need to plug it back into the second equation. We can verify or check our answer by plugging in the solved x and y values back to both equations to make sure we've done the work correctly. So our first example here, we have 4x plus 2y is equal to 10, and x minus y is equal to 13. So neither x or y have coefficients in the second equation. Um, we can isolate for one of the variables in equation number two. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's isolate for x because it's positive already. So I'm just going to add y to both the left and the right-hand side. So plus y and plus y for the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So we'll have x is equal to y plus 13. Now we're going to plug this y plus 13. Okay, we're going to take this, and we're going to put this back in for the x over here in the 4x plus 2y. Okay, so what that's going to look like is we'll have 4 times now instead of 4 times x, we're going to have 4 times y plus 13. Then we'll have plus 2y is equal to 10. So you notice here we don't have any x's left. We only have y's. So if we only have one variable, it's, it's fairly straightforward for us to solve. So let's go ahead and solve. We're going to distribute the 4. So 4 times y, 4 times 13. We'll end up with 4y plus 52 plus 2y 
is equal to 10. Let's go ahead and combine these. 4y plus 2y gives you 6y plus 52 is equal to 10. Move this up here. Let's subtract 52 from both sides, and we'll end up with 6y is equal to negative 42. And then when we solve for y by dividing by the positive 6, we will get y is equal to negative 7. Okay, so we know that y is equal to negative 7. So what we need to do next is we need to plug that negative 7 back in to either one, doesn't really matter. It's easiest to do it in the second one because we're gonna have smaller numbers. So we're gonna take that x minus y is equal to 13. And we're gonna take that negative seven that we just uh, that we just found and plug it into the y there. So we're gonna have x minus, and this is where people will make mistakes, we're gonna have x minus a negative seven is equal to 13. So this is really x plus 7 is equal to 13. And then we can subtract 7 from both sides. We get x is equal to positive 6. So x is equal to positive 6. <clears throat> so that means that we have a solution at 6, negative 7. Or we can state that x is equal to 6, y is equal to negative 7. Okay, both are valid methods of stating our solution to this system. So we're going to check our answer by plugging in your x and y values <clears throat> back into both equations, because we want to make sure it satisfy, satisfies both equations here. So starting with the first one, I think we had 4x plus 2y is equal to 10. So 4x plus 2y is equal to 10. And let me write down the other one here. We had x minus y is equal to 13. So let's plug both of those values in. So we had 4 times 6 plus 2 times negative 7 is equal to 10. 4 times 6 gives us a 24. 2 times negative 7 gives me negative 14 is equal to 10. 24 minus 14 gives me 10. So 10 is equal to 10. The left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So we're good there. Now for the second equation, we know that x was 6, y was a negative 7, so 6 minus a negative, uh, minus a negative 7. It's the same thing as 6 plus 7. And we know that 6 plus 7 is equal to 13. So the left-hand side, once again, is equal to the right-hand side. Therefore, 6, negative 7, is a solution to this system. One thing that I would really recommend that you guys um, get used to doing is by verifying your answer using Desmos. So again, we're going to take our original equations. We're going to pop over to Desmos here. So we had 4x. Oh, let me see. We had 4x. 4x plus 2y plus 2y is equal 10. We have the second one, x minus y is equal to 13. What I can do here is I can take a look at where my two lines intersect, and we can see right here that it does indeed intersect at the point 6, negative 7. So there's lots of tools at your disposal. Um, of course, you can convert both of these uh, equations into slope-intercept form and graph them on your graphing calculator as well. But if you're watching this video, you're very likely um, either on your cell phone or on a computer. We can go ahead and use Desmos. It works just as well on your cell phone or iPad or any other uh, tablet. So you can check your answers using this method. So let's go and try a few more examples. 2x minus 4y is equal to 7. 4x plus y is equal to 5. 
So the quickest way that we can do this is you want to try to figure out which one of the variables should I solve for. And of course, it doesn't really matter. I could solve for x or I could solve for y. The easiest one for me to solve for is the y here because I know, already know it's a 1y. Okay, so all I need to do in this case is just subtract 4x from both sides. So this will end up being y is equal to negative 4x plus 5. Okay, so I'm going to take this new equation, I'm going to take that part, and I'm going to plug it back into the first one there in place of y. So I'm going to have 2x minus 4 times negative 4x plus 5 is equal to 7. So let's go and distribute. And we don't have any y's left. We only have, um, only have x's. So it's going to be a lot um, simpler for us to solve. So negative 4 times negative 4x gives me a positive 16x. And negative 4 times positive 5 gives me a negative 20. And that's all equal to 7. So I'm going to have 18x minus 20 is equal to 7. I'm going to add 20 to both sides. So I'm going to have 18x is equal to 27. And then I'm going to divide both sides. So I'm going to have 27 over 18. And then we know I can divide both the top and the bottom by 9. So I'm going to end up with 3 over 2. So what I want to do now is I'll take that 3 over 2 and plug that back into one of these two um, equations. So it doesn't really matter which one. I want to pop it back into the second one. So I have 4x plus y is equal to 5. So instead of having 4x, I'm going to have 4 times a 3 over 2. And plus y is equal to 7. So 4 times 3 gives me a 12. Divided by 2 gives me 6. So 6 plus y is equal to 7. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. I'll get y is equal to 1. Okay, so I end up with 3 over 2, comma, 1. So 3 over 2, or 1.5, 1 would be my answer. Um, so we can do one of two things. We can check it algebraically like we did on the previous page by plugging in our, um, our points, or our, our, our one point into both equations, or because you're already on a computer, we can go ahead and plug both of those equations into Desmos. So 2x minus 4y is equal to 7, and 4x plus y is equal to 5. We can plug that right into Desmos here. We got 2x minus 4y is equal to 7. That was our first one. And then we've got 4x plus y is equal to 5. We can go and take a look at the intersecting point. And we can see here that we've got negative one or sorry 1.5 negative one as the intersecting point so we have definitely done this correctly let's move on to question number two so we've got 2x plus y is equal to 20 and 6x minus 5y is equal to 12. so we're going to plug this or we're going to try to solve for one equation or solve for one variable rather and plug it back into the other equation so we've got 2x plus y. I want to go ahead and solve for the y in the first equation because it's going to be a lot easier for me to simplify. Um, and the reason why is I want to avoid any fractions. Okay, Let's say, for example, if I wanted to solve for x in this case, eventually I'm going to have to divide everything by 2. Now, what's going to happen to this y if I divide it by 2? Well, I'm going to end up with 1 half y. So if possible, you want to try to make sure you avoid fractions if possible, okay? So let's take a look at this one. 2x plus y is equal to 20. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that. y is equal to negative 2x plus 20. So we're going to plug this negative 2x plus 20 into where the y is in the second equation. 
So we'll have 6x minus 5 times that negative 2x plus 20. And that will be equal to 12. So let's go and distribute. So negative 5 times negative 2 gives me a positive 10x. Negative 5 times positive 20 gives you negative 100. And that's equal to positive 12. Once we simplify, we'll get 16x minus 100 is equal to 12. We're going to add 100 to both sides. And then we're going to divide both sides by 16. And we get x is equal to 7. So we're going to take this value of x, we're going to plug it back into either one. I'm going to plug it back into the first one because, again, we can try to use, as, uh, use smaller numbers. So we'll have 2 times 7 plus y is equal to 20. You know that 2 times 7 is 14. We're going to subtract 14 from both sides, and we'll get y is equal to 6. So I'll have my solution as 7 positive 6. So 7 positive 6 is the solution to this system. And once again, we can go and check it. Um, you guys check that on your own, but that will end up being our solution there. This third example, we got 5x minus 3y is equal to 18, and 4x minus 6y is equal to 18. So here it's going to be um, it's going to be tough for us to uh, to solve for anything without having any or to to solve for anything without um, having any fractions pop up. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to pick one um, and just deal with it. Uh, so let's work with that second one, okay? Because we know we can divide everything by two at some point, so it won't be that bad. So four x minus six y is equal to eighteen. Let's go ahead and Let's solve for x in this one. So we're going to try to get the x by itself. So I'm going to, first of all, isolate for x by adding 6y. So I'll get 4x is equal to 6y plus 18. Then I'm going to divide everything by 4. So x is equal to 6 over 4y. So I can simplify that to 3 over 2y. And then 18 divided by 4, I can divide both the top and the bottom by 2. So they'll give me 9 over 2. Okay, and then now I'm going to take um, this value of x, I'll take all of this, and I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in up there. So once I do that, I'll end up with 5 times, and this is where it gets a little bit messy. 5 times 3 over 2y plus 9 over 2 minus 3y is equal to 18. And it's a little cramped over there. So minus 3y is equal to 18. So let's go ahead and distribute this uh, 5 to both terms inside of the brackets. So we'll end up with 15 over 2y plus 45 over 2 minus 3y is equal to 18. <clears throat> so I know what everyone's thinking. Holy cow, this looks horrible. And you're absolutely right, this does look terrible. But there is a really quick and easy way to fix this. We know that in, um, we know that, of course, in general form, we want only coefficients that um, that are constants, or not constants, whole numbers rather. So we can get rid of the fractions if we want. So this is going to be an additional step, um, and you're going to have to undo it at some point anyways. But for those of you who are panicking a little bit about the fractions, we'll notice that we do have a common denominator here, and that actually makes things a lot easier. We can get rid of the 2 on the bottom here and the bottom there by multiplying literally everything in my equation by 2. So when you multiply everything by 2, guess what? We get rid of of our fraction. So we get rid of this fraction, we get rid of this fraction. Now we've multiplied the negative 3y by 2, that gives me a negative 6y. 
and we multiply the 18 by 2, which gives me a 36. So now we can go ahead and simplify everything, 15 minus 6y. That gives me 9y plus 45 is equal to 36. So we'll end up with 9y, and we're going to subtract 45 from both sides. When we subtract 45, we'll end up with 9y is equal to negative 9. And we'll get y is equal to negative 1 when, once we've divided both sides by, by positive 9. So we get y is equal to negative 1. Wow, who would have thought that we'd get such a nice, you know, wholesome number uh, at the end of that mess there? Okay, so we get y is equal to negative 1. We want to plug it back into one of those two equations. Let's plug it back into the first one. Okay, so we have 5x minus, and we had minus 3 times y, so minus 3 times negative 1, and that was equal to 18. So this will be 5x plus 3 is equal to 18. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides, so 5x is equal to 15, and x is equal to 3 once we've divided both sides by 5. So it turns out that our solution to a rather intimidating looking question is really just 3, negative 1. Okay, and we can go ahead and check our answer. We're here on Desmos, 5x minus 3y is equal to 18. And our second equation was 4x minus 6y is equal to 18. So the moment of truth, let's go and see where we stand. Where's our intersecting point? And right there, 3, negative 1 is where our intersecting point is. So even though that first part looked really complicated, and, and it might have just been because of the factor, or sorry, not the factor, <clears throat> the fact that we chose to isolate for x, you guys can try to isolate for y and see if our numbers end up being a little bit better. <coughs> now, this is one of those examples where I would personally use elimination um, as opposed to substitution. And of course, we haven't done elimination yet, um, but this was this would definitely be one of those situations where I would really use elimination so I could avoid having to work with all this. Okay, this is stuff that typically people want to avoid. Um, so if you can, I would use elimination for this type of question, if possible. All right, now for the last three examples on the bottom of the page. Looking at this first one on the left, we're going to go ahead and figure out which variable we're going to isolate for. So remember, either x or y. In this case, since the y is already by itself, I'm going to go ahead and isolate for um, the y in this equation. So I can rewrite this second equation as y is equal to negative 5x minus 13. And let me clean that up a little bit. Negative 5x minus 13. And what I'm going to do with that negative uh, 5x minus 13 is I'm going to plop that right into place instead of the y up over here. Okay, so we can rewrite that top equation as 6x plus 6 times negative 5x minus 13 is equal to a negative 6. So we can go ahead and distribute that 6 to both terms inside of the brackets. So we'll have 6x minus 30x. And then we'll have 6 times negative 13 gives me a negative 78 is equal to negative 6. So we can go and clean this up a little bit. Let's simplify. So we've got negative 24x minus 78 is equal to negative 6. We're going to add 78 to both sides. We'll get positive 72 on the right-hand side. Divide both sides by negative 24, and we'll end up with x is equal to negative 3. So at this point, we're going to go and plug that negative 3 back into the original, or one of the two original equations, and we're going to go and solve for y. So let's do that into the second one. So we've got 5 times negative 3 plus y is equal to negative 13. 
So we'll have negative 15 plus y is equal to negative 13. And we can go and add 15 to both sides. And we'll get an answer of y is equal to 2. So that means our, our, our solution to this problem is the point negative 3, 2. So that essentially means that the two lines that are represented by our two equations, 6x plus 6y is equal to negative 6, and 5x plus y is equal to negative 13, will intersect at the point negative 3, 2. All right, let's take a look at this one in the middle. So again, we want to identify which one of these is going to be easier to isolate for. In this case, it'll be the y up here. So we're going to rewrite this top equation as y is equal to 3x minus 4, because I've subtracted 4 from both sides. We're going to plug that 3x minus 4 in for this y in the second equation. Okay, so here we've got 2 times 3x minus 4 minus 6x is equal to negative 8. So we're going to go and distribute the 2 to both terms inside of the brackets. And we'll end up with 6x minus 8 minus 6x is equal to negative 8. So we'll notice here it's going to be a really interesting, um, really interesting situation. We have a 6x minus 6x, so that gives me a 0. And we're left with a negative 8 is equal to negative 8. So if you recall earlier um, in the lesson where I talked about this section here, if a system has an infinite number of solutions, the variables will disappear and a true statement will appear. Well, that seems to, to have happened just now. So we have a true statement. Okay, so you have a true statement. True statement, therefore an infinite number of solutions. Okay, otherwise we have what is known as coincidental lines. We can go ahead and we can check to see um, to see if that's true. Okay, because obviously we don't want to we don't want to make any mistakes in our algebra. So we're going to go and confirm. We're going to plug these equations into Desmos and see exactly what happened here. So I've got y plus four is equal to three x. So two y minus six x is equal to negative eight. And we'll see here that the blue and the green lines are exactly the same. So they are in fact the exact same line. Now we can challenge ourselves to think, okay, how, how did these end up becoming the same thing? Well, let's imagine, okay, we're gonna rearrange these so that we have the y's and the x on the same side. And then we're gonna have the constant on the other side. So we've got y plus four is equal to three x. And we've got our second equation, which is two y minus six x is equal to negative eight. Let's take a look at moving or adjusting the first equation. Let's move that three x over onto the left side. And we've moved the negative four onto the right side. Now let's multiply everything here by two and let's see what happens. We'll end up with two y minus six x is equal to negative eight. Ah, okay. If we're able to do that, then it proves that we have the exact same equation if we were to do that. Now again, we're allowed to do that because it's an equation. If we do the same thing to both sides, we're keeping everything mathematically equal to each other. Okay, so that's why we're allowed um, to seemingly multiply the entire thing by a number. As long as you're doing the same to, one, uh, to both sides, that's mathematically allowed. So we've got an infinite number of solutions for this example here in the middle. And our last problem, let's go ahead and take a look at which variable we'd like to isolate. And we're gonna do this one here. We're gonna isolate for the y in the first equation. And let's rewrite it as y is equal to two x plus five. And let's substitute um, this y into this y in the second equation. So six x minus three times two x plus five 
is equal to negative 9. So we're going to go ahead and distribute that negative 3 to both terms inside of the brackets. And we'll have 6x minus 6x minus 15 is equal to negative 9. So again, in this situation, we're going to notice that both of our or our, both of our variables have disappeared. We'll have 6x minus 6x. That leaves us with 0. And we'll have a negative 15 is equal to a negative 9. So this is a false statement. Obviously, we know that negative 15 does not equal to negative 9. So we have a false statement. Therefore, we have no solutions. Okay, and we have no solutions because we have parallel lines uh, with different y-intercepts. With different y-intercepts. Okay, and once again, we can verify this by going on Desmos and seeing if that is in fact true. We have negative 2x plus y there is equal to 5. And 6x minus 3y is equal to negative 9. Okay, so we can see here that we have two parallel lines, okay, which means that the, both lines will have the same slope. They never cross. So we will never have an intersection between two points or between two lines and have an intersecting point um, in this system. So therefore we, ha we have an in or we have no solutions rather, okay, because they never intersect. If there's no intersection, there's no crossing of lines, that means that there will be no solution. Okay, so let's take a look at solving through elimination. Now in this case, elimination sounds exactly like um, how what it describes. We're going to be eliminating, or essentially getting rid of one of the two variables. So we need to make sure, um, in this case, that the coefficients of the variable that we're trying to get rid of are going to be the same, or at least opposite signs in each equation. So we have to make sure we do this by either multiplying or dividing the entire equation on both sides by an integer, and then we add or subtract the two equations together. So we're going to work with the same example that we uh, worked with first for substitution. So in this case, we're going to try to eliminate y. So in order to get rid of y, we can see here that we have a 2y over there, and we have a negative y over here. So if you want to make sure that both of the coefficients have the same uh, value and opposite signs, it's much easier for us to work with a 2 rather than um, trying to make both of these the same and divide everything by 2. Normally, it's much easier to multiply. So let's multiply that second equation by 2. So once we multiply the entire bottom equation by 2, we'll end up with, first of all, the original 4x plus 2y is equal to 10. And then for the bottom, we'll end up with 2x minus 2y is equal to 26. So we're going to add the two equations together. So I know that's step number two. I'm just going to do it all at once here. So we're going to add both equations together. So I'm going to add that entire thing. 4x plus 2x gives me 6x. 2y plus a negative 2y will end up giving me 0. And then I have 10 plus 26 gives me 36. In order to solve for x, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 6. So we're going to x equals to 6 as, um, as our first part of our solution. Now we can plug this 6 back into one of the original two equations. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to plug that, um, that x into one of those two. And let's solve for it, or solve for y rather. So let's plug it back into, let's say the second one again. We want to try to work with smaller numbers if possible. So instead of having x minus y is equal to 13, we're going to have 6 minus y is equal to 13. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I'll get negative y is equal to 7. And then multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide both sides by negative 1. It's up to you. And we'll get y is equal to negative 7. So that means that our solution overall is going to be the intersection at the point 6, negative 7. 
and we can verify our answer again by plugging in um, the x and y values back into both equations, and we can make sure that the left side equals the right side. Um, so I'm just going to go back and kind of refer you guys to that first example that we did. It's the exact same system, and how we did that was we plugged the 6 and the 7, and let me highlight those for you guys here. We plugged the 6 and the negative 7 back into both of the original equations, and we made sure that the left-hand side is, in fact, equal to the right-hand side. And if that's true for both equations, then it definitely is a solution to the system, otherwise known as the intersecting point between two lines. Let's try a few more examples together. So again, you'll notice that these um, these systems are the exact same as the ones where we use them for examples for substitution. So we're going to see if these ones will be a little bit easier using elimination. And again, it really just depends on you, what, what your style is. Um, you might prefer elimination. You might prefer substitution. So for this, uh, this first example, we're going to go and take a look at the y. Let's multiply everything by 4. Okay, and I'm going to try to get rid of the y here. I could try to get rid of the t uh, of the x's. It's really up to you. Um, you you can decide. I just want to get rid of the the y's here. So in order to do so, I'm going to multiply everything here in this equation by four. So I'll have my original two x minus four y is equal to seven, and then my new second equation is going to be sixteen x plus four y is equal to 20. I'm going to go and add both equations together. Okay, So I'll have 2x plus 16x gives me a positive 18x. Negative 4y plus 4y gives me 0, because those will uh, eliminate each other. And then 7 plus a positive 20 gives me a positive 27. We can divide both sides by 18, so we'll get x is equal to 27 over 18. I can factor out um, a 3, or sorry, I factor out a 9 on both the top and the bottom. So I can simplify this to 3 over 2. And again, I can go and substitute this back into um, one of the two original equations. So I'm going to substitute it back into the first one, and I'll end up with 2 times 3 over 2 minus 4y is equal to 7. Again, let me highlight the first part of our solution there. 2 times 3 halves gives me um, 6 over 2, which is the same thing as 3. So I have 3 minus 4y is equal to 7. Let's subtract 3 from both sides, and we'll get negative 4y is equal to 4, and then we can divide both sides by negative 4, and we get y is equal to negative 1. So we can go and compare this again because these are the same questions as um, as what we did for the substitution method. And let's go ahead and check our answer, and we can see that we definitely did get three halves one as our point of intersection. Okay, so again we have to express our answer or our solution as the point three over two, comma negative one. Once again. Um, you can always check your answer by going on to Desmos and plotting or graphing both or both linear equations and seeing if the system does have an intersecting point um, at the solution you found. Again, it's um, you know personally, I do prefer elimination. Um, it gets rid of it gets rid of rid of a lot of fractions um, that you don't want to see, and you can deal with whole numbers a little bit more um, regularly. For this uh, for this next one, let's go ahead and get rid of the x's. I want to multiply everything by 3 up top. So I'm going to multiply the entire top equation by 3. So up top, we'll end up with 6x plus 3y is equal to 60. The original second equation was 6x minus 5y is equal to 12. Now we have to be careful. We do not want to add, okay, we do not want to add the x's together. We don't want to add the equations. If we added them, we'd get 6x plus 6x gives us 12x. That doesn't get rid of anything. So rather, we're going to actually subtract this entire second equation. So we'll have 6x minus 6x 
those will cancel each other out. We'll have 3y minus a negative 5y. So when you subtract a negative, we are really just adding. So 3y plus 5y gives me 8y. And 60 minus 12 gives us 48. So 8y is equal to 48. Let's divide both sides by 8. And we'll get y is equal to 6. We're going to plug this. Let's put this back into the first equation there the original. So 2x plus y is equal to 20. So instead of 2x plus y, we're going to have 2x plus 6 is equal to 20. We can simplify this to 2x is equal to 14. We've subtracted um, 6 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2 and get x is equal to 7. So that means we should have a solution at 7 positive 6. If we go back and check with our solution from the substitution method, and we can see here that we did get 7 and 6 for that middle problem. And maybe just a really quick comparison, you can see that our work here, you know, took us about what? 3, 4, 7, 7, 8 lines, okay, of work. Uh, and we can compare that back up here. It does look a little bit more involved, right, because we do have to distribute, you have to do a lot of simplification as we're working through this. For this last example, on the right hand side, um, it's it's really up to you which one you want to simplify. In this case, it's probably the the easiest to um, to get rid of the y's because if I multiply um, the top equation by two, I'll end up with a negative six y. So I'll have negative six y and negative six y. We can deal with that. Getting rid of the x's is a little bit more complicated. I would have to multiply the top by four and the bottom by five, so I can get 20x on the top and 20x on the bottom. Okay, so you always wanna make sure you give yourself the least amount um, of work possible. Of course, if you wanna get rid of the x's, uh, feel free to do so. It does require a little bit more uh, work on your part though. So we're gonna multiply the top equation by two. So we'll end up with 10x minus six y is equal to 36. And for the bottom, our original, we had 4x minus 6y is equal to 18. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You'll see a negative 6y and a negative 6y. We are not going to add them together. If we add them together, negative 6y plus a negative 6y, or you can think of that as negative 6 plus negative 6, that gives me a negative 12y, and it doesn't actually get rid of my y variable. So we're going to do what seems counterintuitive, we're gonna subtract them. So we're gonna subtract the entire bottom equation. So 10x minus 4x gives me a positive 6x. Six or negative 6y minus a negative 6y, it's the same thing as going negative 6y plus 6y. Those will cancel each other out. And we'll have 36 minus positive 18 gives me a positive 18. So I'll have 6x is equal to 18. I divide both sides by 6, and I get x is equal to 3. I'm going to go and plug this back into one of the two equations. Let's plug this back into the bottom one. So instead of having 4x, we're going to have 4 times 3 minus 6y is equal to 18. This gives me 12 minus 6y is equal to 18. We're going to subtract. 12 from both the left and the right hand side. So we'll get negative 6y is equal to 6. Divide both sides by negative 6, and we'll have y is equal to negative 1. So our solution for this system is 3, negative 1. We can go and check that again with our um, with our method of substitution from earlier on. This was the one where we had some really, really um, horrible looking fractions there, as you can see along the right hand side. Um, it took a lot of work for us to solve this one, um, but we did end up eventually with three negative one as our answer. So for this particular example, you can see that elimination definitely made things a lot easier. It helped us avoid fractions. Okay, and I know a lot of, um, a lot of you guys in grade 10 really, really hate fractions that's all right. Um, make your lives easier. 
use a method that helps you avoid fractions if possible. Um, sometimes they're they're unavoidable, which is fine. But you can see very clearly, for this particular question at least, elimination is definitely the method or the way to go. So for this next example, we're going to multiply that bottom equation by 6. So we start off with 6x plus 6y is equal to negative 6. That's the original first equation. Then on the bottom, 5x times 6 gives me a positive 30x. We'll have plus 6y. And then 6 times negative 13 gives me a negative 78. So in this situation, we're going to subtract that bottom equation. So we have 6x minus 30x gives me a negative 24x. 6y minus a positive 6y gives me 0. And then negative 6 minus a negative 78, that's the same thing as negative 6 plus 78. That gives me a positive 72. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 24, and I get x is equal to negative 3. Now I can go ahead and plug in that negative 3 back into one of my two equations. Let's do that for the bottom one. I'll have 5 times negative 3 plus y is equal to negative 13. Negative 15 plus y is equal to negative 13. We're going to add 15 to both sides, and we'll end up with a solution at the point negative 3, positive 2. And we can check that with what we got in the, um, the other method. And we did get negative 3, positive 2 as our solution using substitution. And we also got the same answer using elimination. Let's try out these two. Now, if you recall, from um, using substitution, we ended up getting an infinite number of solutions for, um, for this one. So let's see how that checks out here. We're going to multiply the whole top equation by 2. So we'll end up with 2y plus 8 is equal to 6x. The bottom remains the same as at 2y minus 6x um, is equal to negative 8. Now this is where uh, <clears throat> this is where things become a little more difficult. Okay, you'll notice here that we don't have our x's on the same side. Okay, so we can definitely change that. We're gonna go and we're going to move that six x onto the left side, and then we're gonna move that eight onto the right side. So we can actually rewrite this as two y minus six x is equal to negative 8. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to subtract everything. So 2y minus positive 2y gives me a 0. Negative 6x minus a negative 6x gives me a 0. So I'll have just a 0. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to leave it blank. On the right hand side, I'll have negative 8 minus a negative 8. That's the same thing as negative 8 plus 8. So that's equal to 0. So I have 0 is equal to 0, which is absolutely true. So true statement. Therefore, we have an infinite number of solutions because we have coincidental lines or lines that are right on top of each other. We have the exact same lines. We have an infinite number of solutions. For this last one, we're going to go and we're going to multiply everything, let's say, by 3. So we're going to multiply that whole top equation by 3, and we'll get negative 6x plus 3y is equal to 15. And then for the bottom, we have positive 6x minus 3y is equal to negative 9. So in this situation, let's go and add everything together. So negative 6x plus 6x gives me 0. 3y plus a negative 3y gives me 0. So the left side is just a 0. And 15 plus negative 9, okay, that's the same thing as 15 minus 9, which is equal to positive 6. So 0 is equal to 6, we know is definitely not true. 0 is not equal to 6, so it's a false statement. Therefore, we have no solutions. We have two parallel lines with different y-intercepts, okay? So again, we have a false statement, we have no variables. Um, therefore, we have no solutions because it's a false statement. Zero does not equal 
to six. So again, I'd, um, I'd stress that you guys go back to uh, some of these examples at the top of the page, page 437 in your textbooks, and try questions six to seven out. Uh, of course, there's lots, also lots of other uh, YouTube videos, uh, practice problems. Um, I'd suggest looking at some of the ones on D2L under the RF9 section for some extra practice worksheets um, where you can try out a few more, um, a few more examples of solving through both substitution and elimination. Moving on to some systems of linear equations in context, um, we're going to use these methods that we just talked about, substitution or elimination, to solve some contextual problems. Okay, And in, this, uh, in these types of situations, we have to go ahead and assign some variables um, and try to figure out which values will satisfy those conditions um, set out in the problem. Now, most of the, uh, most of the time, as we've pointed out already, we probably won't be using um, X and Y as variables. So we're going to try to choose some variables that appropriately represent each scenario and whatever values um, or items that you're using. So for example, um, we have a school that's raised $140 by collecting 2,000 cans and glass bottles for recycling. The school receives $0.05 cents per can and $0.10 cents per bottle. So we need to create some sort of system to model the situation. First thing that we want to do is identify what types of items we're working with. So we know that we're working with cans and we're working with some glass bottles. So we can say that cans can represent or is represented by C and bottles are represented by B. So we want to be able to come up with a couple of different things. We want to first figure out our, our uh, first equation and we want to figure out the number of things in total. So the number of cans and bottles that we have is 2,000. So that can be, become our first equation, that the number of cans and bottles is equal to 2,000. So I suggest that you guys try to write this out before I give you the answer. So you can pause, and we will come up with C plus B is equal to 2,000. Because the number of cans plus the number of bottles is equal to 2,000 altogether. The next equation is going to have to deal with the, the value okay, that's raised um, by collecting all those cans and all those bottles. So we raise $140 in, uh, $140 in total, and we get $0.05 cents per can and $0.10 cents per bottle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say that something is equal to 140 since we are receiving five cents per can, we can say that we've got 0.05 C plus 0.10 B. Now, the reason why it's not five C plus 10 B is equal to 140, that would imply that we're getting $5 per can and $10 per bottle. You don't want that. If you want dollars on the right-hand side, you want to make sure that we're representing the value per can and per bottle appropriately. So it's $0.05 cents per can and $0.10 cents per bottle. So you want to be able to solve, uh, solve the system algebraically, and we want to graphically verify our solutions. I'm going to go ahead and solve this using elimination. I'm going to get rid of the Bs first. So let's start off by multiplying everything in that bottom equation by 10. So we've got the original. And then we're going to multiply that bottom equation by 10 because we're trying to get rid of the Bs. So the original first equation was C plus B is equal to 2,000. That stays the same. For the bottom one, okay, when you multiply 0 0.05 by 10, we'll end up with 0 0.5 C. Then we'll have plus B is equal to 1,400. So at this point, let's go ahead and subtract that entire second equation. And we're going to get 0.5c. The b's will get rid of each other, positive b minus positive b. And we'll get 2,000 minus 1,400 gives me 600. We're going to divide 600 by 0.5, and we end up getting 1,200. So c is equal to 1,200. And we can go ahead and plug that value of c back into one of my two original ones. It's going to be much quicker to use the first one. 
So C plus B is equal to 2,000. Instead of C plus B, we're going to have 1,200 plus B is equal to 2,000. We're going to subtract 1,200 from both sides, and we get B is equal to 800. So that means that we'll end up okay, with an answer of 800 bottles and 1,200 cans. So we're going to end up, we're going to end up if we took C as um, our pretend X value, we're going to have 1,200, 800 as our solution. So let's go and graphically verify our answer. So we're going to go and plug these into Desmos and see exactly um, if we figured out the correct answer. So you'll have to notice that on Desmos, we're going to we're going to be restricted to only using X and Y as our um, as our values. So we, if we say that C is equal to X and B is equal to Y, let's go ahead and do that. So we had X plus Y is equal to 2000. And then we had 0.05 X plus 0.10 Y is equal to 140. You can see here that our solution would end up being 1200, 800. Okay, so it means that we have 1200 cans and 800 bottles is where we'd have that intersection. And we figured out um, that's how many cans and bottles we had in order to, to have a total of 2,000 cans and to raise a total of $140. So that's what the solution means. We have 1,200 cans, 800 bottles. What do the X and the Y intercepts represent in this case? So let's break these down um, by equation. So for the green equation, X plus Y is equal to 2,000. Okay, we can see here that we have your y-intercept and your x-intercept down here. This really just means that we could have one of two things. We could have 2,000 bottles, okay, and zero cans. So if you have zero cans plus 2,000 bottles, we have 2,000 cans and bottles. For our, our x-intercept, this would imply that we have 2,000 cans and zero bottles. So it would still make this true. 2,000 cans plus zero bottles still is equal to 2,000 cans and bottles. For your y and x-intercepts of the second equation, we'll notice that we have 0 and 1,400, and then 2,800 and 0. So this would mean that in order for this equation to be satisfied, okay, we'd need um, one of two things we'd need 2,800 cans and zero bottles to make $140. So if you go and uh, plug that into your calculator, 2,800 uh, multiplied by 0 0.05, that would give us $140. On the other hand, if you had 1,400 cans, or sorry, 1,400 bottles, and you multiplied that by um, 10 cents per bottle, we'd end up with $140. So this purple line shows us how many um, of each type and only one type that we need to collect in order to still make the $140 and to make this purple equation still um, a true statement. So heading back into our original uh, question here, what do the X and the Y intercepts represent? So in short, they represent situations if only cans or only bottles were collected in each case. We're also asked, what's an appropriate domain and range for this situation? We're going to go ahead and go back to our graph here. And we're going to write them in terms of C and B. So we know that our cans go along the bottom. The minimum number of cans we can have is zero. We can't have negative numbers of cans. And the most that we see in this system, hypothetically, we could collect up to 2,800 cans. So we'd go ahead and write that down. We'd have C is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2,800. So that's our domain in this case. So it's a really simple way of writing it out. And then our range in this situation, we're going to write with B as our variable. It's going to be greater than or equal to zero because we can't have anything less than zero bottles. We can have zero bottles. And then going back to our graph, we notice that the largest amount of, uh, of possible bottles is 2,000. 
So B is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to 2,000. So the last question here asks us to, um, to come up with a situation um, given this system here. So it says a bicycle has two wheels and a tricycle has three wheels. Create a situation about wheels that can be modeled by the linear system below. Explain, first of all, the meaning of each variable. That's going to be step number one. So explain the meaning. And then we want to come up with some sort of related problem. So the first thing that we need to do is identify our variables. So we know we have b and t. So b we know is equal to the number of bicycles. So t naturally is equal to the number of tricycles. So we have 2b plus 3t is equal to 100, and b plus t is equal to 40. Okay, so we have the number of bicycles and the number of tricycles, and now we have some coefficients, okay, in that first, uh, first equation there. You have a 2 and a 3. So the 2 in this case is going to be uh, is going to symbolize the number of wheels. So we have 2 wheels per bicycle plus 3 wheels per tricycle is equal to 100. 100 what? Well, we have to uh, think, well, that should be equal to 100 wheels. Okay, so we have the number of wheels in total is equal to 100. The second equation gives us b plus t is equal to 40. So if you have the number of bicycles plus the number of tricycles is equal to 40. Okay, so we can come up with a, a very simple problem here, or a straightforward problem. If there were 40 bicycles and tricycles, the total number of wheels is 100. How many bicycles and how many tricycles were there? So how many bicycles and how many tricycles were there um, if we have this as our system? So that's the end of RF9. Um, again, I'd stress that you guys go on to D2L, take a look at a couple of practice problems to try out. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. There will be an assignment um, coming out. So please keep your eyes peeled on the D2L announcements um, for further details. Until then, keep washing your hands. I'll see you in the next video.